<laughs> it's still here. Darn it. Ah, you know, I thought maybe, maybe if I left this here long enough, somebody else would just break down and, and tear it down for me and I wouldn't have to do it. Like, like Doc lives right over there. He must see this thing constantly. And I thought eventually he'd be like, well, if Etho isn't tearing it down, I'll tear it down the German way. But now it's still here. So yeah, we, uh, we just kind of glanced over this prank last episode, guys. Uh, you know, we saw it. Lots of obsidian. Very, very evil uh, of a prank. Any prank involving obsidian, evil, cruel, right? Because it takes a long time to tear down. Uh, apparently, though, I got a spoiler in the comments. There's more to this prank than just what meets the eye here. Uh, either underneath the sign or... No, it must be inside the actual corners. This is from Impulse and Tango. Or this is their response to me uh, criticizing their... Their lack of corners. <laughs> uh, they uh, they got back at me here. But from what I read in the comments, there's actually something inside here, I guess. Yeah, look at this. Okay, we mended your corner problem. Oh, it's a mending book. Oh, oh very clever. I like that. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. So it's it's kind of a mix, right? It's a prank. It's, it's to get back at me. But... Secretly, they're kind of saying, like, oh, we really like you. Here's a gift. Right? Like, to the other hermit crafters, they want to appear that they hate the NHO, but I think they really like me. Right? I think we're good friends. Best friends forever. Um, is there uh, something in each corner? Oh, there is. Oh, my goodness. Super generous. For your digging troubles, another mending book. Wow. <laughs> Okay, like if I could get one thing on the server, it's it's like I really need elytra wings and I need uh, mending books. So this is great. Oh, and uh, shulker boxes are also very handy. But yeah, this is like one of the best things I could get. Uh, I guess we'll check all the corners here and then I'll tear this down. There is in all four corners, I think. Another mending book. Now, if I was to guess, I am... Uh, I am Detective Etho here, but I would say there's probably another mending book in this corner, right? Yes. Okay, very cool. All right. So, yeah, that just leaves the fun part now. You got to tear it down. I will see you guys in, like, three hours or so. I'm going to guess four stacks of obsidian. We'll go with four. Just about four and a half stacks of obsidian. That's pretty close. Evil. Very evil. <laughs> Took a long time to tear down, but uh, I forgive them. The mending books really did uh, help put me in a good mood, I'll say. But yeah, I don't ever want to do that again. Uh, so while uh, while tearing that down, I did take a couple breaks here. One thing uh, got a little bit of XP. We're going to do some enchanting here. Now, it just says Unbreaking 3. I'm hoping for Protection 4. Protection 4. There we go. Cool. I'm about, I'm about to go fight the dragon a couple times to get uh, elytra wings. And then we're going to move off to the jungle area. We're going to get out of this savanna today. Savanna, savanna. I forget which one's right. Um, so I'm, I don't want to walk through that jungle repeatedly, though. It's, it's really nasty walking through there, like a thousand blocks. So I want to be able to fly. Um, so this will help out. we got some pants. Should be able to survive the dragon fight. Oh, and I wanted to put uh, I did get one feather falling book from a dungeon. We'll put that on our boots here because it's one of the most likely ways to die is from falling. And also uh, while uh, taking a break there, I, I made a, this wheat farm thing for my cows. This is uh, what I built to my single player a while ago. I wasn't sure if this worked on a server though. Uh, and it turns out it does. Yeah, I did get it. So what, what you have is three dispensers with bone meal in, right? And then the observer block here. Uh, you keep it dark with the slab, and then you got the farmland. And then just two pieces of redstone dust. Super simple. And then all you got to do is plant down your, your seeds or your carrots or whatever. So it works, except uh, it's not uh, quite constant on the server here. Like, I was worried the lag would make it not work at all. If you look at how quick we get the wheat, though. 
it seems to like stutter like you'll get a bunch and then it'll stop i think that's from the leg but it it does work for the most part booyah What? Oh, there we go. Woohoo! Ah, yeah! Wells came along and, and helped me out with the dragon. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> That's not what I want to hear. Um well, I'll head How do you spell head? Head like that. I'll head to spawn and check. I guess. Oh, I really hope uh I hope that she's been dropping the wings. I haven't seen any though. Oh. All right, that's a good time to get out of there. Okay, here we go. No! <laughs> two dragons! Killed two dragons. They don't drop the wings. It's broken. Aw, oh, man. Dang. Didn't get the wings after all. Ah! Oh! Whoa! <laughs> Uh huh. Thanks a lot. So Wells, he's very nice. He has a backup uh, pair of wings. He's gonna lend me here, uh, so I can go explore the end and hopefully find more. And then I gotta return these to him. All right, everybody. Well, I tell you what. Um, things have not gone very well. <laughs> I showed a little bit of video of me fighting the dragon and stuff, uh, but I'll try to just summarize what happened. This four or five hour disaster that uh, the end has been for me here today. So, yeah, I gathered the gas tears to do the dragon fights. Um, on the server here, they have a command block thing that drops elytra wings whenever you kill the dragon. It's, it's a really nice thing uh, on servers, so that, like, you know, eventually all the end cities are going to get explored, right? So you need something, some other way of getting them. Uh, but I guess uh, that's not working currently. So, fought two dragons, got nothing out of it. Wells Knight uh, joined me on the second fight, and I think he felt bad for me because, uh, you know, I, I didn't get anything. So, he was super nice. He lent me his uh, backup pair of Elytra wings so I could go explore the end, uh, look for some end cities, and hopefully find another, another pair for myself. Um, problem is, I had trouble finding any of the end cities, so, so I had to go really far out. And I wasn't, like, recording or really paying attention to what I was doing. <laughs> Silly me. Um, you should always, always check your coordinates, guys, whenever you take on an end city. Always. Or bring a map with you or something. I didn't do that for some reason today. And an Enderman ended up killing me. So I lost all my stuff, which uh, really sucks, right? But the worst part of it... Wells Knight, the nice guy who lent me his uh, elytra wings, I lost that his pair. <laughs> I feel really bad about that. Um, and then he w like took time out of his day to help me try to get my stuff back. And I borrowed another pair of elytra wings from B-dubs, which, you know, if I lost that too, I would have been just devastated. Um, but I used that to, to look through the end as well. It's kind of like looking for a needle in the haystack when you don't know, uh, like, where you died. So... Looked for half an hour, an hour, we both did. Uh, didn't find the stuff again, but while looking, Wells Knight found two more Elytra wings, and I found a pair, so in the end it kind of worked out, but uh, yeah. <laughs> could have could have gone smoother. Uh, anyways, so I lost all my stuff, came to the end uh, here to check out the Enderman farm, and I've been doing a whole bunch of enchanting, uh, so we got pretty good stuff again. I uh, used those mending books that we got from Tango and Impulse, so we got uh, mending and unbreaking on the wings. Um, good boots, and 
think I put mending on the pick. Yeah, we got it on the pick, on the sword. So, all in all, pretty geared out now. Also filled up a bunch of stuff here. I had to do 12 enchantments before, before I finally got Silk Touch on a pick. Um, and did a bunch of books. This is also mine over here. More books. And some other random stuff. But uh, anyways, guys, we're going to get to our project for today. I do have something in mind that I want to build here. Uh, and I think it's going to be really cool, actually. <laughs> we're going to be building like a mini Nexus. Hopefully within two episodes. Two episodes is my, my goal with it. So today we're going to focus on uh, the idea and designing it. And probably building it a little bit too. But then next episode we're going to try to get it done. So first off, let me show you the area here. So this is where I think I'm going to set up base. Uh, it's a nice it's a nice area in the NHO jungle. It's got a lot of hills and, and stuff like that. We'll just fly up and take an aerial view. So I got my beacon over here for the speed mining. This is where I've been doing it. And that's uh, B-Dub's tree over there. There's a bunch of rivers, jungle temple. Um, and I think there's a lake or something too nearby. Seems like a nice area. Anyways, so let me explain the idea. We'll get started on this. Uh, I have put together a redstone shulker box. Ooh, beautiful. <laughs> All right, so the way this is going to work, this is going to just be for like 10 or 15 items. This is mostly uh, bulk storage for things we get a lot of, like cobblestone. Things we mine from, from the ground, like cobblestone, stone, dirt, gravel, sand, uh, that kind of stuff. So I think for uh, each item type we do here, we're going to give it plenty of storage, like at least 10 double chests of storage. And we'll probably just snake them together like this. Um, go as high as we want with it, right? Now here is the key to the system. This is how I want it to work. So it's going to be a storage system that you can like drop items off in a chest. And they'll automatically uh, get sorted into the correct, uh, correct area. Like we'll have item filters to make sure sand goes into the sand area, cobblestone to the cobble, right? But something else we want to do with this is uh, keep track of how much sand goes into the sand area, how much cobble goes to the cobble area. And every time we get, get like 64 cobble in our storage here, what we want to happen is we'll have like a menu system. You know how I've been talking about menu systems in my single player? We're going to have a menu system where if we get 64 cobble in the system, we want one cobble here. To show up this will represent 64 and then let's say we get 64 dirts then one dirt will go in here if we have two stacks of dirt there'll be two dirts three stacks three dirts and what this is going to do this is going to show us how much stuff we have in the system just by looking in this chest we'll see oh we got 32 stacks of sand or 32 stacks of cobble uh, but also we're going to have what i want to do is have a hopper here or or something of that that nature when we look in the chest, let's say I want to get a stack of dirt out of it. All we will have to do is press Q. One dirt will go in this hopper, and then it's going to tell the system to give me a stack of dirt and deliver it to me. That's what I want to happen. Now, to do that <laughs> is a whole other story. This is going to be tough to do. But uh, let's work through the pieces here and, and try to figure it out together. Woohoo! All right, guys. So I was just talking to Azuma in chat here. And he's going to hook us up with iron, which is awesome, because I was really, really short on it. Uh, in fact, I only have 25 hoppers. That's it. <laughs> so that's going to help with this build a lot. Um, I'll try to run you guys through the basic idea here, okay? Um, so we're going to have our storage units. So there'll be dirt, gravel, cobble, probably at least 10 others, right? Uh, each of the storage chest things is going to hook up to some droppers. Um, probably like what I learned from the Nexus in my single player, you need more than one dropper. If you try to get like five stacks of items out of one dropper, it takes forever. It's not practical. So I think we're going to want to get like eight, eight droppers per chest unit, right? So if you send eight droppers, eight pulses, you get a stack of items, uh, which won't take very long because we want this to be fast and practical too, right? So... Yeah, the dirt one will have eight droppers, the gravel will have eight droppers, and so on and so forth. Um, what we got to do from our menu here, if 
we throw five dirt in, we want five stacks of items, right? We have to detect what we just threw into here, like what type of block, and also how much, and react accordingly. So this is going to go directly into some item filters first off. We'll have one for dirt, cobble, gravel, etc. If it goes through the dirt filter, then it's going to switch to the dirt droppers here. So when we send this... When, our, when we send all of these uh, redstone pulses, only the dirt droppers will activate, not the gravel and the cobble ones. So that's how we're going to get our items. Um, then to detect how many items we throw into here, we're going to have to do something a little bit fancy. This is something I built a while ago. I don't think I've ever shown it before, though. It's a hopper clock. <laughs> now, uh, we're going to do something a little bit extra with this. So... You guys know if you have a sticky piston and a sticky piston, this will run consistently. It'll, it'll keep running. If you have a sticky piston and a regular piston, it only activates once when you send it a button press. Uh, do I still got the button here? Oh, I think I took it off. Wrong side. <laughs> oh, it's over there. Okay. Yeah, so this will only run once because we have one sticky piston, one regular piston. What we need to happen is it runs depending on how many time or how many items we throw into here. So if we throw five items in, this needs to run five times. Um, so to do that, I already forgot which side. I think it's this one. We're going to add a redstone torch, a dropper. That's going to go into some hoppers. I guess we'll go this way. And then when an item goes in this hopper, we want to detect it and run it like this. This is like a nice compact way of doing this, I think. Supply drop in the nether. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Aha. <laughs> it's going to save me so much time. You have no idea. All right. So I think if we do that, this will run depending on how many items we throw in here. So let's say... Give it five jungle wood. That'll go into here. Um, we'll ha we'll still have to activate this the first time. Wrong side. Oh wait, no. Was that the right side? Okay, so this should shoot out an item every time. Yeah, it goes to three. You see this just flashed over here. So it'll keep going until these run out, I think. Okay, so I've been uh, experimenting with this a little bit. Uh, I hooked up a comparator clock to our hopper clock, and that runs to the dropper. So this is going to run to the eight droppers I was planning. Uh, it turns out, though, if you have, like, just two items in the hopper clock, like, that's pretty much minimum you can have. And we run this just one time, it shoots out nine items. I want eight. Uh, if we change this to one item in the hopper clock it kind of glitches out a little bit see it goes back and forth and then back and forth twice we don't want that to happen and it still shoots out nine items so that's not good so we might jump up to 16 items and to do that we got to add a little bit into here I'm not sure how many probably nine let's try eight or no it would be less than that that's quite a bit Okay, <laughs> that shot out to almost half a stack. Uh, so it would be four, maybe? A lot of trial and error with this. Okay, that time it shot out not quite... That was 13, right? We're close. I think one more item will do it. All right, so this is how I do redstone, just trial and error. Uh, perfect. Okay, 16 items exactly. That is great. So if we only use four droppers and we do that, it'll shoot out a stack, which is pretty good. Let's run this one more time with uh, it doing it multiple times. So that'll run three times or four times because we started it up ourselves. Okay. Good. And one more time, okay. So I think that shot out a stack of items worth, and then it stops. 
Excellent. So this is going to work out pretty good, I think. I'm happy with this. And uh, just to clarify, in case you're not quite following me, basically when we throw like nine items from our menu system into the hopper, uh, those are going to end up into this dropper. And this is going to run, if we throw nine items in, this will run nine times and shoot out nine stacks of items from our storage here is the plan. So we'll have like four droppers maybe and they'll activate nine times, get nine stacks of dirt. Pretty simple. Um, one more thing, this is like the last tricky thing with this build that I don't know how to do just yet. Uh, once we figure this out, I'll be able to build this. We just have to put all the pieces together. We have to figure out some way of detecting when a stack of items enters our storage system, like when it goes through our auto sorter. How do we know when to add one item to our menu? All right, so every 64 items, we want to add one to our menu. How do we count to 64? Um, so as items flow through this hopper, we want to detect that. So we'll probably just put a comparator here and somehow trigger a counting mechanism. So that'll turn on. Um, maybe we can do like two hoppers facing each other somehow and keep track. Okay guys, so we got a solution here to, to our tricky problem. I guess all we need is a hopper clock. Hopper clocks, is there anything they can't do? Gotta love these things. So yeah, it turns out we can use the hopper clock as our memory system. So we want to try to detect whenever we add one stack of items to our, our storage. Thing is, we don't always, or we're not going to always add one stack at a time. We, we're going to add a random number of items when we put items into our storage, right? Sometime maybe we'll add 33 items or 12 items or five stacks of items. The key is every time 64 items pass through, we need to detect that. So even if just one item adds in, we have to count that. So if we're trying to detect a stack of items, we put a stack of items in the hopper clock here, plus one. And you can see like if we put one item into storage, one item left here. If we put two items into storage, two items left here and went into here. This is a hopper clock with two sticky pistons, by the way. I, I didn't mention that. And so you can see it's it's equally matching what we add in here, into there. Uh, if we tone this down, we can actually see it work. Oh yeah, and you can see like every time this triggers, it's gonna shoot an item out and this is gonna go into our menu system. Um, so let's, just, uh, let's make this detect only 16 items so that we can actually see this working because it takes a long time to go through a full stack. So if we, we're detecting every 16 items. So if we put a stack in here, this should trigger four times. And I don't know if it's exactly um, perfect. <laughs> so I triggered once. So that'll add one, add one item to the menu. Trigger twice. And you can see when, it's, uh, when it bounces here, when it goes up to 17, it goes to 17 and then quickly goes back to 16. So that's why we add the extra one. Um, okay, so it almost triggered four times. There was one item extra in here. So it's close to accurate. It's not quite perfect. Anyways, I think this is what we're going to use, though. Awesome. So I think we worked out all the pieces here, guys, all the tricky parts. Uh, now we're going to start putting stuff together. I'm going to try to build one of these units with you guys before we wrap up the episode here. And you'll have to forgive me, I'm starting to lose my voice. <laughs> I've been talking too long, so this is the last thing we're going to do. Uh, I started clearing out an area here. This is where our first building of our brand new base is going to go, guys. Pretty exciting stuff. Our mini nexus. Or if you guys have a better name for it, let me know in the comments. And that's what we'll, we'll call it. I think we're going to start the building here. And like the entrance will be that way. And then, like, we'll enter from the cool hill area, I think. So I want to go a little bit up in the air. Um, maybe here will be good. 
Sure, let's start it here. So first thing we're going to do, get down our four droppers. And again, th these are going to get activated, I guess, 16 times to shoot out a stack of items. Oh, it's going to be really tough to do, by the way, because we're we got to build in the air. <laughs> uh huh. This is where a jetpack would be nice. Okay, so this will go shoot items. Uh, where the dirt is is going to be packed ice, I guess. Have to get uh, some packed ice on the server. Um, and then I think this is going to be a three wide design, like tileable every three blocks. So this will be the start of the next one. This will be for this one. Uh, we'll run redstone along here to activate the droppers. These will get fed from hoppers above. Uh, then we're going to have a sticky piston over here. This is going to be our switch. So if the block is up, then redstone will be able to uh, pass through here, right? And if it passes through, it's going to activate the droppers and shoot the items out. Um, if we don't want this unit activated, then this block goes down. We just have to activate the sticky piston and retract it and then signal can't pass through. If we want it to go up, we have to send this a quick pulse and then it leaves the block behind like that. So we'll have some some redstone running sideways here to this piston. Anyways, let's not worry about that right now. Um, so items shoot out here. I think uh, we're gonna have a dropper over here. This is gonna be to shoot items for our menu system. You'll see what I mean in a little bit here. Then we'll have droppers running to that. Ho uh, hoppers. <laughs> uh, it's been a long day. Um, and then we're going to start our snaking storage system. So I think I'm going to do nine double chests. And this is just going to run up like so. Yeah, so we can have as many double chests as we want here for storage. Uh, I was going to do 9, but after seeing it, it looked maybe overkill. <laughs> so I toned it down. We're only going to do 7 double chests. That way this isn't quite as tall and takes less resources and stuff too. I think that's good enough for what I'm doing or, or what I want to use this for. So then at the top of our storage here, this is where our item filter begins. Um, so I'm going to build that. Run the redstone like that to a repeater down there. Okay, and that's going to face into a redstone torch, which will control whether this hopper is locked or not. Um, so we put a redstone torch there. Powers that block, then powers that hopper, right? So now if we put uh, some cobble in here, if we want to make this our cobble um, unit, for example, it'll filter out to 41 blocks, I believe. Yeah, there we go. Then it stops. Okay, so now if uh, like planks pass over top through here, they'll end up here. If uh, cobble goes through, though, it'll go into our storage, into this unit. You can see it's starting to filter down. Doesn't go to the end here. So basically, uh, this hopper chain at the top here, we're going to use this to sort our items because it's going to pass over top all the different item filters. So if cobblestone's in here, it'll get pulled down by this item filter, go down into storage. Um, and then you can see here, this is also where we uh, put our hopper memory unit thing. So I added a redstone torch at the end of our item filter here. So whenever um, items are passing through, this turns off, which unlocks our memory units and allows items to flow in here. And it starts keeping track of how many items are actually entering the storage. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. I think so anyways. <laughs> and then we have a redstone line down here. We got to connect this to our menu menu dropper. If you follow the, like where all the, the hoppers are going here, you can see they actually go into that dropper. Um, and also the hopper below can pull the cobblestone down or whatever items in there. Um, so once once this dropper fills up and this hopper fills up, then this will start filling up, right? Um, and then when we connect the redstone to this, we have to run or make this shoot into a water stream, which will carry it to our menu chest. I know, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> we'll see it uh, a little bit better next episode.
this is for the item delivery, the water streams here. We've got to get some packed ice, but these all will connect together from all the units and then be uh, delivered to us. But this, uh, this one here is for the menu. So there's going to be two water streams, two different ones. Anyways, I think that's going to do it for today, guys. If you have any thoughts or ideas, please let me know in the comments. But uh, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you again in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.